<laughs> planning board uh, meeting July 12, 2022. Um, will everyone please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Upcoming meeting dates are August 9th, 2022 and September 13th, 2022. Uh, we have minutes from the meeting of June 21st. I doubt that everyone has had a chance to review those since that was late last month and, and I think they were just published a couple of days ago. So we'll hold those until the next meeting. Um, let's do the roll call, starting with Don Pappy. Don Pappy. Craig Arthur. Lori G. John Eichmann. Ed Miyoshi. Richard Campbell. Sarah Bledsoe. Okay, first item on the agenda is Tucker Trail Subdivision. Can you connect? Good evening, good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm doing it the old fashioned way tonight. That's okay. It's great. Um, so this project was actually before the planning board uh, uh, before um, we had our hearing, it opened and closed. The, um, the holdup relative to this one is actually, it was tagged relative to potential of archeological artifacts. So um, we went ahead and moved forward relative to an archeological study. Uh, certainly that took some time. Um, we received that actually um, back pretty recently, indicating that there was nothing on site. So um, long and short, that, that was really what was kind of keeping this thing from moving to the next step. So, um, you know, again, the, the plan hasn't changed really at all since, since I was before you. Layout's the same. Um, just that particular issue that we needed to get through in order to, uh, you know, to get moving forward. Okay. So um, I think, th are there some wetlands issues that uh, you've been discussing with professionals? Yeah, so there, if you can see, I'm, uh, there are wetlands. So, Michael, when I was looking into, um, after speaking with CPL, um, there is also a water course that's not shown on the on the map, like that should be mapped, um, that kind of connects the two wetland areas or the two ponds. And I, um, you know, I have a call into DEC because I, I haven't received any comments on the circulation that we we created. I don't know if they ever got this map. <laughs> Um, and I think they might need to weigh in on whether or not they're gonna connect those wetlands because they are in close proximity to the, the, wet, the DEC wetlands on either side. So I just want some sort of confirmation that they are not gonna take jurisdiction of, of those wetland areas. Um, yeah, I don't think we have that in a lot of and Again, even if these are connected, we have the ability to provide whether it's a town buffer or a DEC buffer, there's just no action. The only issue is that it could 
it could, and I know that CPL did the calculation with the lot count formula and said you're extremely close. So I don't know if you um, calculated that 100 foot buffer into it all and if the line would change at all if DEC decides to take it. So we just need to get confirmation from DEC to make sure that they're not, I mean, we have a little bit of time because we, you, we can't schedule your public hearing until the next meeting anyway for September. We're so hope, well, that's right, but we can't, we can't do your resolution until September anyway. So um, at this point, I think if we could just try to get that closeout loop, and I did send an email to DEC, so hopefully they'll respond to me one way or the other, whether or not they're gonna even consider taking jurisdiction, and then we can move forward from there. Mike, with the house that's closest to the wetland buffer, how much of a backyard are they gonna have? Uh, this is a 50 scale, so you're probably walking 30, 3 feet. I mean, this is actually a fairly large lot, so it's, you know, you really can kind of move around with this, you know, depending on what the actual soft land gets done to actually, um, you know, depending on the exact type of hole that's actually going to So if they put a deck off the back or something like that, they're going to be pretty tight against that buffer if, if they don't have a little more than that, probably. I think they're not right there. Mike, can you go to the mic? Yeah, I can, I can just make a lot of rounds to provide a little more room in the back there for, for a future yard. And the septic, is, is that on that particular house that Lori mentioned, that septic's front to the left as I'm looking at it, right? Then, right? Okay, and then, you know, sometimes when there are wetlands close in close proximity to the backyard, the, the planning board contemplates some sort of demarcation of the wetlands so that it's clear um, for the, the person living there that they're not really supposed to desert, disturb beyond that point. Um, sometimes we do split rail fence, sometimes we do boulders. Um, it, it sort of depends on the circumstances and what the planning board thinks is most appropriate for that particular location. So that's something you may wanna consider um, as part of the resolution of approval. Now is town buffer and DEC buffer same amount of distance? No. Okay. The town buffer um, changes based on the size of the wetland. Okay. And the DEC doesn't regulate anything that's under 12.4 acres. And then the DEC automatically puts a 100 foot adjacent area buffer on every single wetland. The Army Corps does not regulate necessarily buffers, but it, um, in this case, there's two DEC wetlands on either side of these ponds. And <coughs> the question is whether or not they're connected hydraulically. And if they are, then um, the DEC could potentially take them as DEC wetlands or may not. And sometimes the reason it isn't mapped is because it's private property and they haven't mapped it for some, you know, for some reason. Sometimes it's, they do, depending on the aerials, it just, I mean, the trouble is the DEC is not easy to get in touch with these days, so. And, you know, and again, from what we show here, I, I think <laughs> confidently there's not an issue anyway because we're showing a 100 foot buffer. I guess my only concern, and, and again, you know, I, I wish this had been brought up nine months ago because I could have got DEC out there, got their opinion, and not walked in here not knowing because this is not, this doesn't show up in his letter at all, Michelle. In, in whose letter? letter? In, in, in the town engineer's letter. I mean, I'm not sure why we haven't received any response from DEC on the circulation, which is kind of interesting, so. Well, this was circulated. I know, but I don't know, ago. that's why I'm curious as to why we haven't received anything, because typically they would write that in the, their response letter to a, a circulation. Um, so I'm not sure why we haven't received that. But hopefully we'll be able to clarify in the next, before the next meeting and it won't be an issue. Uh, Mike, just so I understand, I, I, did you just say you weren't aware of it until tonight? or just in the last letter, because I'm looking at a letter here on your new comments, it seems to mention it. This is dated uh, from- So oh, yeah, there, I got it. There's information here regarding the town and the core uh, wetlands and connect, connect, connectivity, mm -hmm. but I, I don't, unless I'm missing it, I don't see anything here regarding DEC wetlands. I mean, we, we go to the maps, we check and see what kind of wetlands on the property. Right? We know but we're, all, you really should be checking with all of the jurisdictions. Like if there's, if there's any close by, I mean, it is kind of technically within a DEC check zone. So they, you know, all of that should be kind of looked at. And uh, like, Wiki yeah, should I, be advising I, you of that. I understand that. But again, it would have been nice to know that, you know, nine months ago, because I got to resolve it here tonight. Yeah. 
Are there any, any other questions or comments from board members or professionals? I just had a couple comments, I guess from CPL. Um, Mike has mentioned the discussion about a 36 inch drain line. Yeah, I, I know you with that. Yeah, apparently it showed up on the file map, so um, right. I've got to check and because when they were out here doing the topography, they didn't pick that up. So All we'll, right. get, we'll get that on there. And I don't know if any easements may be required or you know associated with that, but you're going to locate this on the map, though, right? You're going to yeah. locate that culvert. Okay. And then you've had dialogue with DOT as far as your driveway access. Yeah, they provided a letter of conceptual approval okay. a couple, couple months ago. Okay. Do you have any notes on the plan uh, regarding? the shared aprons in terms of timing. In the past, with these aprons, they can become problematic if it's not defined when they get built, by whom do they get built, and then you build half of it, and the other person builds half, and then we've had problems in the past. So have you had any thought about that? Yeah, I think the intent here is to actually, whoever's the first one in the gate builds the entire. I mean, there's gonna be little easements put around these. Right. So whoever's the first in the gate's gonna be the one that's actually gonna construct them. So you'll have notes to that effect. Yeah, whatever whatever you need legalese, wise, or notes on the plan is fine. Okay, and you probably haven't worked out with DOT just yet whether you need culverts underneath these aprons or not. Uh, no, I know it's, fairly flat along there, so. Probably part of your DOT. Permit. Part of the permits, yeah. But we just have to kind of coordinate. Oftentimes that permit comes after as a condition. Mm -hmm. So, you know, after the fact that they require a culvert it wouldn't necessarily be shown on this plan. So I think that's something that should be nailed down if you could, so that the plan reflects, you know, what. what yeah, we're, 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 I mean, I'm fairly confident we're talking to someone who's interested in, in building all of these, and he's actually pushing me to, prepare the, the, the documents and move, start moving the permits along, and I think we can go ahead and do that. Might as well. We've got, we got some time now, so okay. you know, if that comes up, we'll know it at the next meeting. And if it's not finalized, it, at least some note to the effect that, you know, mm -hmm. however that DOT permit reads, that, you know, that's how these are going to be controlled. Okay. And then I would just ask the planning board to consider, we probably don't have to make a decision until the, the res meeting of the resolution, but consider if you want any sort of demarcation of the wetland boundary in the backyard. Or, I mean, or we've landscaping. done that in other cases like this where it's so close. I think it's, I think it's important. Have uh, any of the wells been drilled yet? No, because I need a neck back and they won't allow me to do that until I get a neck so back. Just, I mean, I hope it's not the case, but I know you said it abuts the golf course. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, it's on the other side of the rail trail. From the golf course. Right. Okay, only because I know the golf course, there was a testing procedure in place for, for quite some time to make sure that whatever chemicals the golf course was in, was using didn't affect any of the wells, so. Yeah, we um, we went so far as to provide a, a testing criteria and get that approved so that when we get the next step, we can drill those. But I'll, uh, I'll make a note to talk to Tanya about that. Okay. I think that's it for what I see here. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I, have, I have one more question. Michelle, mm -hmm. last time we were here, there was a question about like the definition of whether this falls into a shared driveway or not. Mm -hmm. Because isn't, don't two of those lots not meet the minimum size for a shared driveway? Right, so I think what he's done is, what he's done on another, which has been allowed on another application, was make the shared portion in the separate part of the lots and the, sh and the shared portion is actually kind of in the right of way outside of the, um, it's on the state right away. So yep. that's where it's shared, and then it goes separate into the lots. And that's sort of a workaround, I would say. And it's been allowed in the past. Got it. Has there been any negative fallout from that in the past? Well, it was Hopewell Enterprises that was approved by the board, but that's similar. Um, and I'm not sure if there's any others that were approved. I know Hopewell Enterprises is definitely approved. Yeah, they, they, I know they, they filed, they're going through the process of, for the building permit for one of the homes. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of knowing how that all worked out logistically, I don't think we have the evidence of that yet, so. Okay. So with the two driveways butt together like that, who's responsible for the maintenance of the first part? Yeah, so what happens is, is as shown, not shown on this, but on the plat, there's gonna be a small rectangular easement right there, and there's gonna be um, duties, responsibilities for each of the property owners to who's supposed to do what, so there's not a question, one person <coughs> plowing and somebody else doing nothing. Whether there's a house there or not. Because that's 
been slipped in some of these, these agreements in the past and, and the homeowner thinks that there's no house there, they don't need to maintain the driveway, but they do because they have access to their lot. Yeah, I, I would. I guess if there's the shared entrance here and there's an easement around it, um, this house gets built, this doesn't. I mean, they're going to certainly do what they got to do to get in and out. Um, when this house gets built, there's going to be shared responsibility there. Which is, it's been maintenance issues mm -hmm. with, with shared driveways, you know, where, where there's an easement yeah. over. Some I mean, I don't, I don't think we wanted to go as far as a shared driveway with these, but it was really the shared entrance to limp those curb cuts out on the road. You know, mm -hmm. so that was kind of the intent behind it. Would there be any issues in terms of DOT approval or anything like that with individual driveways? Like, would they would this get approved that way? Um, by the direction, really, of, of to some degree, the previous projects that we've done on this board, we actually proposed them as that. I think it, at some point it makes it's easier from a logistical standpoint to separate them. But again, then you have two curb cuts that are kind of sitting right next to each other, right on the property line. So it gets kind of a wacky with turning movements and things like that. So yeah, I'm not sure the DOT is going to approve that many new driveway cuts onto the state road. That's mm -hmm. that's the issue. So that's. Yeah. The issue that, uh, too many curb cuts oh. on the state road. Uh, yeah, yeah. To save money. Hmm? Not doing this to save money or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I think it's cleaner if they're they're separate. They're yeah, I mean, yeah, agree. Mm -hmm. Easier to sell everything. I think it's much cleaner. But they put, wouldn't be able to get the number of lots, right? So they're not saving. They're gaining money. Why? Because they because the DOT would never approve well, the but, driveway separate. But they could. They choose not to. So they're, they're getting more lots. Uh, getting back to the D's, the wetland issue, I mean, we're dealing with them right now on a number of projects with delineations and so forth. Michelle, I assume you don't mind. Who, if are, you, who are you dealing with right now? There. Um, you know, we're dealing with different people because we're doing an orange and Ulster and then down here. Okay. Um, I can get you to contact to Yeah, if you want, because I can, I can, sometimes it helps to get a call from us to get them out there quicker. If it's a town versus an applicant. Well, and, or they also may review what they have and say it. We're right, not, they may not just a, look at a map. Not a jurisdiction. They may just look at the map right. and tell you that. More than likely, that's what they're gonna do, actually. Right. Mike, I think you answered this before, and I'm just not recalling. Where, where do we think the realignment of 216 and 52 comes in? Does it affect any of these driveways? And again, I, I haven't looked, seen any of those plans or anything like that, but my understanding is 216 would come, it would come in this right. location, form a 90 here. So in fact, it, it really is on the other side of this project. So you don't think the aprons of any of these lots get affected when that gets realigned? It should be mm. after the aprons? I think it right. Okay. Yeah, and, and actually that came up during DOT's review just to make sure that, you know, that wasn't going to happen. Um, and even if there was a roundabout there, which has just been talked about, it still wouldn't affect these these driveway locations because they're so far away from the intersection. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there's no other issues, um, we thank you. All right. So we'll get it together and come back and see you. All right. Thank you, folks. Okay. The next item on the agenda is McDonald's. Is there anyone here for the applicant? And maybe they went out for a burger. <laughs> okay. So well. I could just speak to that quickly. They, um, McDonald's is on schedule for a public hearing at the next meeting. They did submit uh, revised plans with with minor revisions based on the last um, last meeting. I actually called them and told them they didn't necessarily have to attend tonight's meeting, but they wanted to attend tonight's meeting. I guess um, I'm wondering if the weather may be affecting them, because I think it's stormy down south a little bit, and they're coming from Long Island, I believe. So um, really, they were just coming to just talk about the small tweaks that they did. They got a letter from CPL saying that they've um, pretty much resolved all the comments that they had, so they can fill us in at the next meeting before the public hearing on what they, what they modified, and then we'll go to the public hearing. I think that'll be great. Excellent. Thank you, Michelle. We'll move on then to uh, the Tom subdivision.
Okay, so this is um, a project of a uh, three lot subdivision off of Stormville Road. If you take Stormville down to the end, right where uh, Biken Hall. Biken Hall. Right, hits. It's, it's basically at that intersection. Um, I think the last time we presented to the board, we were okay with layout and things such as that. Um, but there's an existing barn that sits at the front of the property. And with the proposed layout with a flag lot in the rear, we basically were creating a pretty large nonconformity in terms of the side yard setback. So we were required to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, we did um, really largely try to keep it in keeping with kind of the, the way things are out there in the older buildings and close to the road and so forth. We were, um, we were successful in obtaining our, our area variance. So we are now back before you relative to the, uh, the subdivision itself. Um, we are in the middle of a circulation for lead agency, um, which has gone out, I guess it was two weeks ago or so. So um, with this one, there's no way to move forward relative to any kind of approval or so forth. Plus we still, look, we are looking to schedule a public hearing if that is doable. Um, I know that August is a tough month <laughs> for the board. So we were hoping to move that to September if possible. So that's okay. kind, of, kind of where we're at. Very good. Um, questions or comments? Michael, on, on that one U-shaped driveway, it seems to go over the property line to the back lot. Is that gonna be removed? Yeah, we're showing, I, I don't know if it shows up on yours, but we're, we're requiring scarification of removal of the existing portion of the U, dry, U portion. So, and then the driveway that goes back to three, there was a utility pole in the way, so we kind of did a jog around it on the plan. But uh, yeah, we wanted to try and, you know, it, get, it get, got too confusing and, um, and, you know, maintaining one curb cut off of Stormville Road for each lot. This is how we ended up with this. Okay. So, so I just wanna make sure. <laughs> So, so you're gonna remove the driveway behind the barn? I can't see that drawing. We're looking at a computer here. All right. So this? Yeah, that, that part. And this. Okay, yeah, that's not shown on the drawing. That's on, on file, that's what I was asking. So then the actual curb cut is the one in the middle? Right. Uh, okay. Right. Okay, Michelle, is this something we can schedule for a September public hearing now, or do we need to wait until August to actually establish that? Um, I mean, you could schedule it now if you wanted to. I mean, uh, what I would do is I would wait till you declare a lead agency, actually. Okay, uh, which we'll do gonna have, we can't at the do next that meeting. We're just a, probably a couple weeks shy of that, so we'll just do it all at the August 9th meeting. Okay, okay. That's, that makes no difference time frame wise so that's fine. Got it. Just, uh, sorry. Go ahead, please. Um, on this plan for lot, what is it, lot one? I'm not real familiar with Stormville Road in this location. Um, you know, it's not showing what lies ahead on Stormville Road, whether there's any sight distance issues for this driveway. That's a straightaway there, that should be okay. That's a dead straightaway? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. After biking, after after biking all, it, it just goes keeps down to where it kind of used to cross the Taconic. Yeah, it just dead ends. Dead straight away. Yeah. You can see it in the inset. Okay. There's no, there's no vertical. You know, it's a straight. No. Yeah. All right. I, I haven't got out here yet just to see if there's any trees that need to be cleared or anything like that. Those driveways are going to get staked out at the end of this week anyway for the highway superintendent so we can see it. So if you want right. to figure out that. They'll be staked at the end of this week. Is that what it is? They will saying? be staked this week. Okay. Mike, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the barn is what you got the variance for or one of the houses? The barn. Okay. Yeah. And they- The barn's in good condition? I mean, it's not in disrepair or anything? Uh, it's, 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 it's enough to- The, barn, the base of the barn, that's one of the reasons we're looking to keep it. So the 1800s, uh, the can give them beams downstairs, nice uh, stonework, uh, some conventional numbers replaced some of them. Exterior walls upstairs. With solid? Solid, yeah. Okay. We plan on Okay. Is there going to be enough to be able to maintain it all the way around, or are you going to do a small easement onto the other, the adjoining property? 
Mm. I, can't, I just can't tell how many feet Doesn't it is from the actual. It raises a good point in terms of maintaining the building. Right. Yeah. yeah. Our, our map makes it looks like it's sitting right on the property line. I just want to make sure you got 2.1 foot back. Oh, I got you. Um, listen, right now it's all the family. They got to replace a roof if they need to paint. You know, you need a little bit of space. That's a good point. Every once in a while, Mike. <laughs> 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 nice. Okay. It's that tight because you're maintaining a minimum width on Stormville Road. Is that it? I think uh, I see a dimension on this plan, that's why I asked. Yeah, that, the plat, there's a, there's a separate plat, but um, what, what is, what is, in terms of the setback distance, right. you mean? Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the variance we got. I think it was like 25 feet, so we, it was a 24 foot variance type of thing. Um, I think he needs 50 feet here. Is the, is yes. the flag lot 50 feet exactly? Need it, yeah. Flat portion, yeah. Okay, any other questions or comments? The stone wall is gonna remain. There looks like there's a stone wall that runs parallel for a majority of that driveway to what's that lot three. That's gonna remain the stone wall. Between, between two and three, you Between three and the adjoining property, it looks like there's a stone wall. On uh, Stormville Road or not? not uh, it, it follows the, what would that be, the southern property line maybe? Yeah. So you're joining parcel lot one top is it looks like a stone wall that see that like well right it runs on the line to the that street driveway. michael on the line to the street on the southernmost oh, area with that driveway right? yeah it's keep going wall. down our drawing shows a stone wall yeah i mean it's on there it's very light and actually from all the property line at this point here yeah, no that's going to remain okay there, there's a supposition Anything further for Michael? If not, we'll see you next month. Okay, you got it. Thank you, folks. Thank you. And the last item on the agenda is a sketch plan for MBC properties. Donovan Drive, we were in front of you guys, um, I think two months ago. Um, 
contractor storage is proposed. Originally we had processing on the table um, on site and then just wanted to get a pulse from the board and based upon the uphill battle that we would experience with variances in CBA and another agency involvement, we pulled it back um, so there'll be no processing on site. So this is just gonna be um, contractor storage. And in talking to the applicant, um, what we tried to do is, since we don't have that processing component, we tried to push the building more toward in the center of the parcel so that we can circulate around uh, the proposed building. Building remains the same, 40 by 60, with a couple of parking spaces in the front. And then the crosshaired area that we show on that site plan would be the area dedicated for uh, contractor storage. Um, materials, um, no flammable materials on site. Uh, there's gonna be no mechanical repair inside the building. We don't have a tenant yet, but we tentatively show four bays. Um, again, geared toward uh, contractor storage. There'll probably be a li relatively light office component uh, possibly in there for just bookkeeping or staffing or just um, open to flex space for a potential client that could come in there. Uh, vehicles to remain on site, uh, dump bodies, triaxles, landscape trailers, um, anything utility based uh, would be located in that cross hatched area. Screening remains uh, around the site, uh, 50 foot buffer to the residential boundary toward the north and toward the east. Still have show the pine trees um, along the three sides and in the, the, the front entrance will have uh, a gate in front for you know, to prohibit access into the site and aid in uh, visual buffer into the site. That's it. The fence is around the entire perimeter? What we're gonna do, just because of the, the way the natural terrain is, we're just gonna have the fence in the front um, with the gate at the front entrance and then the, the, the screening would be um, toward the east. That, that pine tree line that you see would be an elevated berm with pine trees on side, on its side. And then as you go around the site, pine trees in the back, it's, it's vegetated in the back, so the screening and just the, the, the way the site rolls with how we're proposing grade, there's, there's probably about a 14 foot drop from the rear property line into the storage area. So we have that natural terrain to act as a, as a buffer too and a deterrent into the site. And what about, that's where the, uh, isn't there like a nursery school or something mm -hmm. down from that? Right, so the, the nursery school is, if you're looking at the entrance, it's across the street and toward the northeast. So we, we tried to push, push the site back um, and away from that component. And again, with us not having the processing aspect into this application, again, this is mainly just vehicle storage. So with any contractor business, you're, you're, you're out of the site during the day and then you're returning at night. So, so Brian, um, just, as, why would you not put the asphalt parking or the parking area kind of behind the building instead of further away, as far away and behind the building as possible? Is there a reason you couldn't do that? Uh, we haven't explored it with the applicant. It was just uh, throwing some ideas on paper, but it's something we can entertain with the, as we move forward. Again, we're in a due diligence period. The applicant hasn't gone through the actual purchase yet, but we're just trying to get a feel for the town. But you know, as far as positioning items on the property, um, we're open to that. It's just mainly the concept that, that we'd like to get some feedback on. Okay. What do you estimate like daily trip production, like how many vehicles in and out on a daily basis and how many times? I mean, you probably, I mean, depending on, again, we don't have a tenant for the space, um, but I would say, to, you know, typically with most contractor sites, they like to be, you know, out, uh, out on the job site, you know, between, you know, seven and eight. So you'd probably have traffic coming in early employees. Uh, so it's just built on speculation. They don't have a specific use yet. No specific use yet. It's going to be something to trap, uh, you know, like oil and antifreeze from dripping out of any of these vehicles. Or? The, the the reason why we have the, the, the parking in the front um, in that asphalt area, we would, we would have probably some of the heavier equipment in the front there. And then the areas of asphalt, let's say on the down downward side, we do have uh, curbing shown in catch basins, so there will be a stormwater management treatment area. Um, we're over the one acre disturbance threshold, so there'll be a SWIP, and uh, so there'll be some protection for that. What kind of vehicles are you gonna store? 
or landscape, plan, I'm sorry. What we, what we, typical contractor storage, landscape trailers, triaxles, probably have some service trucks, some utility trucks, things of that nature. Um, some of the issues have been trucks warming up in the morning before they head out with the daycare near there. That would probably be a big issue for them. We could, we could, we could address that with, with timing and, and, and things like that or limited idle times. Uh, part of our, if we do move forward, what we planned on doing is obviously coordinating with the daycare on what we're doing. Um, but also when we go out for an updated survey, just locating that building, locating um, the, uh, the play area in the back, just so we have perspective on how far away we are and we, you know, we have numbers to give to the board on, on separations. And then uh, one other question, any blasting required to do the contouring of the land? Based upon what, what we see right now, it's going to be um, just excavated earthwork with track mounted excavator um, over the course of time. Thank you. So this is a permitted, the contractor DAR is a permitted use in an I-1 district per with some general use regulations. This is not a formal application right this second, but um, what I'll do after this meeting is circulate around the general use regulations that are required um, for contractor shards to meet so that you can understand. And the reason I would do that is because it gives the planning board some discretion, this particular um, use. So they have discretion in requiring buffering, uh, screening. Um, they have some discretion in the number of um, they, they also talk about having any vehicles that are stored overnight must be parked in an approved parking space, so you have to locate that. They have some, you have some discretion in whether or not you want things inside or outside. Um, but what I'll do is send around this language to you so you can read it before um, the next time that they're on an agenda. I don't know if we're coming back to the, the next agenda, just so you're familiar with the questions that you will need to address as part of the site plan approval if they decide to go forward. So if they build the building, get a CO, or does the town require that once they get a tenant, the tenant comes to the town to get a permit to operate inside the building? You mean if it's a if it's a contract that they're renting to or leasing Correct. to? Correct. So if, if if they get you know um, approvals to build the building, they get a CO for it. Well, they sh I guess the they town would. I know in a, like in a case of a strip <coughs> plaza, they have to take out occupancy permit. I'm not sure about single user. Is this intended to be a single user or it could be multiple users? It, it could be single, it could be, it could be multiple. I think multiple would definitely trigger occupancy permits if it's a okay. single user, but I'm not sure. Yeah, just because if you had all this different activity going on there, you know, you'd want to understand what's going to take place thereafter. I see there are lines drawn through that building, if I'm reading this right, it looked like there's three sections. That's what it looked like to me, that's why. We, potential bay locations. You know, we just, we wanted to show, we wanted to show the concept that there could be multiple tenants. Um, and it, again, this is mainly derived versus what the market's gonna drive, whether it's one tenant, three, four. It's right now flex space. So. What's the square footage again? We're 40 by 60, so we're 2,400 square feet. 2,400, okay. Brian, there's one vacant space between this and a daycare, is that correct then? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's to one the, uh, parcel. Yes, to the, um, east of us. So if you're looking at the, we're adjacent. Northeast, there's a vacant parcel. Right. Okay. And uh, just food for thought, I know in the case of another contractor, they wanted to do, they were doing snow removal and they wanted to have a salt shed. So just, you know, if that's proposed or contemplated at some point, that would have to come back to the planning board. Brian, you've got a you've got a loading zone next to the building. Are you anticipating tractor trailer or small truck? What what kind of vehicles are you anticipating for the loading zone? So when, when we laid out the building and we positioned the parking and the aisle widths coming around the building, we assumed a low boy would be coming in here. It's probably one of the biggest ones you can have for a turning radius. So if there is a bigger piece of equipment uh, coming in, it would circle around the building and then exit on the lower side. So we did model that in our in our site plan. So you're saying it would go around the, am I not? Clockwise if we're looking at gravel the gravel in the back? Right. Ah, uh, um, gotcha, so okay, I'm there. sorry. I was thinking of it as limited pavement. Okay, I'm with you. And the garage doors are in the back, I imagine. Doors in the front garage, the overhead's in the back. The, yeah, the, that would be the, the thought process. I 
have you taken a hard look? Probably not yet at the stormwater. I see you going subsurface, kind of a small, and you got a fair amount of impervious you're creating. So I don't know how real is that realistic, or that's just a we, rough concept. It's it's a rough concept. We tried to put the. I mean, if you if you look at the site where our entrance is positioned, um, let's say to the east, or if you're looking upward on the plan, there's a snow easement there. Um, that's part of the file map that's shared, it's shared on both lots. So what we try to do is work with grade, work with elevation, because we have, a, we have a, an existing ditch line um, to the, toward the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. So just trying to play the elevation game, you know, get the stormwater as close to the low point as possible, which is the entrance area. Um, it, it's just showing it in concept, the stormwater could potentially go underneath um, the entrance. Um, to help facilitate um, moving water through the system. As I would think, until you get that sized and you run that analysis, it could substantially change what the, what the front of this looks like. Right. And, it, and, if, and if worst case... I know, like, rumination right down the road has got a, a fairly way. sizable pond there. Right. And with these, they're, the, the object is, is, is for storage on site, so if we have to make the system bigger, it would obviously push underneath the pavement and they would be H20 rated structures. Okay. Brian, I think my only other comment is just um, based on the construction vehicles that are there, if you're intending that employees will arrive at the site, park, and then take a vehicle out, you may need more spaces than what you're showing. I know you don't have anything marked where the construction vehicles would be, but you need to show where the employees would park. Yeah, we, we, could, we could show that. On a detailed plan. I don't know if you double stack or I mean, it, that's probably a probably fine, but just to just to show it. Because they're pulling out 2,000 yards, it looks like. So, Lori, just piggybacking on that, um, that's one of the general use requirements is that they that every vehicle is on in some sort of space. So you may have to at least demarcate some sort of space when you get to that point, just to show so that there can be, and there may be some limit on the number of vehicles that they allow you to keep on the site. And in order to enforce that and to understand that, you would have to have demarcated spaces. Yeah. Um, but I, could, I mean, I could but, see double stacking for, for employee parking, that sort yeah. of thing. I mean, if they're all going out on the same truck, it's not. Right, as long as you guys know it's going on and you can, it's done in an orderly fashion. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's a note about building the ZBA over is this board issue, the excavation permit? Um, the Z, they're allowed to go, technically they're allowed to go for relief from the ZBA from any of the requirements. Um, they wanted to go to the ZBA for the processing, but the ZBA was that basically is a use variance right. essentially. So, um, but no, we can issue the, we can issue the excavation permit as part of the site plan approval. They don't need a referral to the zoning board. They're looking to take out approximately 2,400 yards of material, which that, require the excavation. Yeah, permit. That's what we're showing. That would be issued, my understanding, by the planning board. You Correct. do not have to do the zoning Yeah, we can issue that as far as our site plan approval. Okay. It just has to be noted in your um, public hearing notice to remember to do that when you. Remember to do that. That's important. Okay, additional questions, comments? Very good. You guys, you guys want to add anything? No, I just wanted to add that. Uh, if you could come to the microphone, please. Thank you. I just wanted to add that in preparation of this, we went, myself and Chris went to the um, nursery school or the daycare. We spoke to the lady who's in charge of it. She's been there like five years. All of, and she walked us, she was very nice. She walked us through the whole place and 99% of the area where the kids are and, and stuff, is behind that building. So it, we have a lot next to us, which I was bought, but I don't know what they're doing with it. So we would be one lot away and their stuff is behind. She said, well, she said during the day, they'll probably make more noise than we would. And she said, the kids love it when the garbage truck comes by. So would you guys allow them to come over and take a quick look? And we're like, yeah, whatever they want, you know? <laughs> so we did, we did do that research because we knew it and they were, she was very pleased with everything. That's good to know. And, and, and distance from any, any residential structure the residential it would be what? structure behind the property is just lots of vacant land. Okay. There's a house about, I think we, we did it with the, on the computer you can put two points, and the house was about 700 feet away. And 
the other one was about the same, and it's all wooded. So Got it. that's why. Thank you. Okay, Brian, anything else? I think we got input from the board that we were looking for. I okay. appreciate it. Very good, thank, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Um, that completes the uh, agenda. Is there any other business to be brought before the planning board? If not, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. I want to stay long.